Hi, Keith here from Academy of Bass. Today I'm looking at three great bass lines from three absolute giants of music. And the best thing about them is that they all use exactly the same riff. It's common in music to share musical ideas and you hear the same riffs and licks cropping up all over the place. But it's very rare that you hear exactly the same riff being used in numerous songs. I'm sure you'll have heard of all three of the great songs that I'm gonna be looking at today. But the really interesting thing about them is that they all use exactly the same harmony device and if you don't already know that and already know how to play it I guarantee that you'll have heard the name of it. The first line I'm going to play is Seduke by Stevie Wonder but I'm not going to play through the full bass line I'm going to play part of the unison riff. <laughs> now this is in the key of B and the part of this line that I'm going to look at is this. The second line is by Joe Dart and Wolfpack and it's Captain Hook. By the way, there's a completely free PDF for this lesson that's got everything in that I'm going to be looking at, fully notated in both standard notation and tab. And I've included a backing track for you to practice along to as part of that download too. So the link to that's posted below. Make sure you grab a copy. If you enjoy the lesson, it's always really nice to hear from you. So give me a shout out in the comments and feel free to like the video and support the channel by subscribing. Now the Captain Hook bass line is fabulous and it's got this little excerpt in the middle that when Joe Dart plays it, he pretty much mutes every single note but for the purpose of this lesson, I'm gonna let those notes sound out. <laughs> key of C and the part of this line that I'm going to look at is this. And the third line is Teen Town by Jaco Pastorius and this is in F. Before I get into what I think is the best part of this lesson I'm going to break these lines down starting with Sajuk in B. Now this is essentially a B major pentatonic scale. I have done a bunch of lessons before where I look at the pentatonic scale, so I'll post links to those in the description below. You might want to check them out. I tend to look at pentatonic scales in lots of different ways, so hopefully you'll find something really interesting in one of those lessons. But back to this line. So we've got B the root, then it's C sharp the second, then it's D the flat and third. Now that note's not in the major pentatonic scale. Then it's D sharp the third, F sharp the fifth, G sharp the sixth, and then it's B the root of the octave. Now, the addition of this D, the flat and third, is turned this major pentatonic scale into something that sounds a little bit more bluesy. And it's often referred to as the major blues scale. But for me, this line sounds even better because that line repeats when we get above the octave. And it makes the line sound doubly bluesy. Captain Hook is pretty much exactly the same, but it's in the key of C. So we've got C the root, D the second, E flat, which is the flat and third, E the third, G the fifth, A the sixth, and then it toggles back to G the fifth before we hit the octave. And again, repeat this line, which makes it sound double bluesy. And then it's on to Teen Town, which is one of the most iconic jazz bass lines of all time. But that can't possibly be the same, can it? Well, let's, let's check it out. Now this line's a line of two halves. The first is this. Now that's almost identical to Captain Hook. We've got F the root. This time, instead of playing G the second, we miss it out. We jump straight to A flat, the flat and third, that blues note. A the third, C the fifth, D the sixth, toggle back to C the fifth, and then F. But it's the second part that I'm much more interested in. So we've got F the root, G the second, A flat or flat and third, A the third, C the fifth and D the sixth and then it moves on. When you hear them in context they don't sound like the same thing to me but as standalone bass lines all three are incredible and I'd certainly recommend learning them. Now we're on to what I think is the most interesting part of this lesson and that is can we take this riff and turn it into something that's different and interesting, perhaps original. I'm gonna do this in the key of E and that's the pentatonic scale and this is the riff. 
but for me that's a little bit high in register so I'm going to play it down an octave so we've got E F sharp which is the second G the flat and third G sharp the third B the fifth C sharp the sixth and then E now if I play this at the same tempo with the same feel it's probably just going to end up sounding the same as the previous lines and I don't want that. I don't want it to sound the same as those great bass lines. So I'm going to play it at a much slower tempo. Yes, that was slower in tempo, and yes, I played the same notes and the same riff, but did you recognize it? Give me a shout out and let me know in the comments. For me, this is a really good way of working on things and practicing things. Take something that you know really well, and then try and turn it into something completely different, and something that's unique to you. Let's have a quick look at what I played. So I started with an open E, then I played the octave E in the second fret of the D string, then it was... F sharp, G and G sharp. I did play a muted E string before I played those three notes. Then we've got B at the second fret of the A string. That's our fifth. Hammering on to C sharp at the fourth fret. That's our sixth. Then it's E and back to C sharp. And it's a repeat of our little bluesy motif. A slide from F sharp at the fourth fret of the D string down to E at the second fret to finish off. Now the second time through I started exactly the same way. Then we've got B twice, C sharp once and E once. And that's just a slightly different way of using our bluesy motif. Now up to now I've been playing over an E chord but now it's onto an A chord. And over this A I played this. Now that's just our original motif. A, B, C, C sharp, E, F sharp and A. But I'm playing it in this position. And this is the first pattern that we usually learn for a major pentatonic scale. All of this is in the PDF so if you grab that you'll have access to all of this. So this is what I play. Played A. The second, which is B at the seventh fret of the E string, then I jumped to C, which is the flat and third at the third fret of the A string, slid that into C sharp, which is the third at the fourth fret of the A string, then it's on to E the fifth at the seventh fret, then it's F sharp the sixth at the fourth fret of the D string, then it's A, and I finished off with this little bluesy turn. So I think that's a completely different bass line to the original riff. So we've got three iconic bass lines that use exactly the same riff that comes from the major pentatonic scale, which is one of the best friends that you can have as a bass player. And we've turned it into something completely different. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, give me a shout out in the comments and let me know. Don't forget to grab the PDF too. The link to that is posted below. And feel free to like the video and support what I'm doing here by subscribing to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, happy practicing.